look, it says we're live. Oh, wait, I, I need to open up my Facebook and share. I know. See, me too, man. That's what I was about to do, man. I'm about to, I'm, I'm, I'm about I'm, to do that too, man. I'm about to go to my pages and all that stuff. And I still haven't figured out a quick way to do it yet. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, it takes, it takes a hot minute sometimes. It does. It takes a minute to show up, but that's all right. We, uh, we, well, what, uh, oh, welcome we all y'all that are watching us through our thing. Oh, wait, I, I need to open up my volume Facebook and get in the echo Ooh. chamber. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't like the way it sounds. Stop that. <laughs> I'm, in a, I'm in an echo chamber here, man. That's kind of a metaphor for social media in itself. Oh, yeah. We're all in the echo chamber. Did you tag me on this thing, man? I I haven't even gotten to that oh, thing. Oh, there we go. There we go. I see it now on the oh. stream. Yeah. Uh, right. Share. Right post. Share to a page. We are sharing, we're sharing. I got some random teenage girls like walking through my house, which sounds creepy, except for the fact that I have a teenage girl and some of her friends have kind of got over here. Um, oh, that's, that's the to my world. Of, of, of fatherhood. Welcome to my world, man. I'm welcome here to support to you and your uh, fatherhoodness. Nice. Nice, nice. So we're pretty much just killing time. I don't even know if anybody's watching this thing yet. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> we are so unprofessional, man. We really need to get our lives together, man. We really need to get our act together, man. <laughs> well, this, this was, like you said, this is one of those bum rush things. We we're just like, we just, yeah. we're just going to jump on here. What's we didn't tell on? nobody we was coming on here. Nothing. We just jumping on this bad boy, man. Boom. I would do sometimes. We got. I see four eyeballs on there, man. If you if you're watching this, hit like, hit share, because we about to yeah. get into something pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Very, uh, very necessary. Today. Hit like, hit share, and uh, I'm, I'm 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 sharing this to my page again. Boom, 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 boom. That'll be good enough, <clears throat> man. JBK. Oh, there it goes. I did it. All right. Did I'm you do it? This. Two minutes it. in, we're still fumbling and bumbling, hey. man. We're like. Yeah. We gotta Too get the people ready, dudes, man. Don't know what's going. All right, all right, all right. Is, well, now, now we done did it. So let's get to it. 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 Let's do this daggone thing, man. Okay, hey, I people, am Kirk oh, M. Samuels, and I am Jason B. Kendrick. That's right, and we are the Mad Men of masculinity, baby. That's right, folks. We're just real men having real conversations for you. And today, yeah. it's 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 all about coming together, holding space, being in brotherhood and and uh yeah, I mean, you had that that whole experience just recently. So, I mean, you were talking about how you had to hold <laughs> Yeah, space man, if I can um if I can be uh if I can be a little bit transparent right now, I'm texting my daughter to tell her to close her bedroom door so I can hear him. Um I can be a little bit transparent, man, and um you know, so my grandmother um had her second leg amputated last week and uh and my mom is the primary caregiver for my grandmother um for the prior, probably the past decade um my grandmother also has the surgery is one thing but she also has pretty late stage dementia um and the type of dementia that she has is <clears throat> known it's called louis body dementia it's known to be fairly volatile and and aggressive in terms of their how they act out i mean she's really um i mean she cusses like samuel jackson um i mean she'll punch you and, kick, and it changes you know it, it's it, it's it fluctuates big time and so um so i give that background to say that uh you know once she had her surgery last week i really felt it on my heart to go out there and just support in any kind of way i didn't really have any expectation i took my son with me um and uh and we just kind of went out there for about four days i think it was um and i found myself man you know really leaning in it was really present to me of just being present being present and just leaning in man and it was so hard because i felt like in the, you know every hour that we were there i felt like i was just holding more and more space uh for my mom uh for my grandmother uh for my son for myself just for whatever um, you know, there was a, there was a moment where uh, I'll probably never forget this for the rest of my life where, you know, we were sitting at, at the kitchen table and my grandmother, she was kind of having one of her meltdowns and, um, and she just kind of looked at me in, in like a dementia kind of thing. And she was just like, uh, 
you know, begging me and like just begging, like, will you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? And and I was like, yeah, Granny, you know, what can I help you with? And she's like, I don't know. I don't know, but please help me. And you could almost see like just the almost like what I would imagine a anxiety or panic attack looks like from the outside. And and, you know, just it was desperation in her eyes. And, you know, and, and then she just grabbed my arm and my hand and she was like just rubbing my hand, just like, you know, almost like she was fascinated by the by the skin. I mean, it was just it was just surreal man and then you know everything from giving her meds to feeding to um i didn't have to change her diaper my mom did but uh getting her in and out of bed with a lift and so on and so forth man and you know and then try to help my mom with stuff around the house that she needed help with and and all those kinds of things and um and uh you know, and then just thinking maybe, you know, this may be considering how often I get back to DC, this might be my last time, you know, seeing my granny and just so and so, man. And I just felt the, you know, I just felt like the the pressure or the burden to the best way I can describe it is just be present, but holding space for everybody that's there, stoic or whatever. Like I was the only man in the house, you know, and, and, and just trying to provide stability. Um, or some sense of support and all those things. And, and I, I just wondered, you know, as you and I just were texting the other day, I was just wondering is, you know, the, the fascination with that or just the nuances of that from a man masculinity perspective, holding space in a world that can seem chaotic and holding space in a household or a, a room, just literally a space that needs stability or, you know, I, I'm not even sure really how to articulate it, but just, um, and maybe it's something that you know that we need to uh, that more men need to develop is the ability to do that because you know it's being that long pole in the tent kind of thing and and holding up the highest part to allow the rest of the space or the rest of the room to just kind of flow within that so i don't know if i'm rambling or making any sense but it's it's, it's it was it is a really weird place that i found myself in uh over over the past weekend well, I mean, it, it makes sense to me, but I mean, just what's kind of coming for me is what I'm hearing is one of the things that we as men really are, I don't want to say supposed to do, what we're very capable of is holding space, creating foundation and creating that stability during times of chaos or during those storms. And mm -hmm. I would ask you, because it sounds like your only job was to be there, be present, and then respond to what was presented to you. There was no script there was no had to none of those things you were just there being present and, and creating that kind of stable foundation and just being like i'm here to do whatever mm -hmm. i mean was that right yeah when we went out there you know i really you know telling myself i was surprised actually that my grandmother remembered us um because i hadn't been out there in two and a half years um and uh and so when we went out there i was even telling my son like you know i don't really know what to expect um, we, I told my mom, we don't really have an agenda. We got no plans, you know, just kind of whatever is needed at from moment to moment. I did end up getting to take my son, um, on the subway downtown to see White House and Lafayette Square and all that kind of stuff. And, in that, but we didn't really, it wasn't a sightseeing kind of a vacation trip out there. So yeah, I really didn't have an agenda other than just to be there and plug in in any kind of way that I can. Well, I mean, I think that's probably the greatest point when it comes to the masculine within masculine and feminine dynamics within relationships within families holding space is really about just being present without an agenda i mean mm -hmm. we don't need to know and i think that's where we, we get we get hiccuped or we get tripped up is that we feel like we need to have the answers we got to have a plan we got to have all these things figured out but really just being there in the moment as a you know calm stable energy Mm -hmm. really all you need to do because whatever is needed will be presented to you it's almost mm -hmm. like it comes down to conveyor belt like okay we need to to get her in the shower we need to change her clothes we need to get her meds we need to feed her or, or you know whatever it is that, that happens to come up so i know <laughs> in my experiences i've always felt you get that fear that that fraud syndrome pops up like well i don't know what to do i don't know why i'm going i don't know what i'm supposed to do mm -hmm. but you don't have to because if you're actually being there and being present and, and, and really responding versus reacting. Mm -hmm. I think that's the, the hugest key when it comes to holding spaces. 
it's not about giving somebody answers. It's not about fixing somebody. It's just about being there to mm-hmm. hold some space, to, mm-hmm. to, to be present and respond to what's needed. To, yeah. I mean, you know, we don't know what they need. They may not even yeah. know what they need. You know, and the, the tough part about that is, and here's how I felt like, and even now after the fact, uh, it's like the questions that I have is, is that enough? You know, like eh, enough. Um, you know, maybe that's one of the kind of, fundamental foundational questions that we have as men is, am I enough? Yeah. Um, but even in that moment and in that space, man, it is like, uh, you know, am I, you know, am I being enough or am I enough in that moment? And, you know, that's kind of the, the, the million dollar question. Um, well, I would, I mean, I would ask you this, were you able to be present and respond to what was needed and were you able to accomplish what was needed in that moment? I don't know. I mean, you know, I think it's easy for me to say, man, I wish I could have done more, right. you know, but but was maybe being there just yeah. enough, you know, or maybe just the things that I did or maybe just showing up yeah. is enough. And maybe sometimes showing up is not enough, but maybe sometimes showing up is enough. Right. I mean, and so, yeah, when you're in that moment, man, when you're holding space and trying to, and we would say holding space and trying to do it with some grace, uh, maybe we got to give ourselves the grace to just be there and just, just, just that, just holding up space. Well, I mean, I think that's what we're kind of touch on is when you're, when you're there present, it, whatever you do is enough because it's what's presented to you. You, you handle that. You take, I mean, mm-hmm. if you, you're, you're not a surgeon, you couldn't help with her surgery. You're not a doctor. You can help with really her health care, but yeah. you could be there, be present, be calm and be supportive to your mom and you know, be there as just that extra presence. Because I think in those cases, especially, I mean, I can only imagine how your grandmother feels, but I mean, especially your mother, she's the caretaker and how stressing that might feel or how like she's got the weight of the world on her shoulders and just having you there as just support just presence mm-hmm. she now you know and during that time she didn't feel alone she knew she had help and yeah maybe like you said just being there and then responding is is enough and i yeah. mean and i think if you felt really called to do something else mm-hmm. that would have been your that then i would say yeah then that, you know if, if that's what the more that's needed to do that but i think a lot of times we overcomplicate holding space because we feel like we need to have the answers we feel like we need to have a plan or that mm-hmm. If we're going into to some uncomfortable situation that's around surgery or healthcare or hospice or you know some some of these things that we you and I can't really do anything mm-hmm. about, yeah. But just being there, you know, yeah. letting them know they're not alone, and and I think that's mm-hmm. the the scariest and the most frustrating part is, I mean, in my experience, when I when my father was uh, had pancreatic cancer and they gave him six months to live, and I mean, he's a tough old bird. He lasted eighteen months, but when he finally got to that point he had told me when my quality of life gets to a certain point when it's no longer a positive quality of life i'm, I'm done mm-hmm. and, and you know and he he sent me that phone yeah you know, i got that phone call after he's like you know i'm done i'm done with radiation i'm done with chemo i'm done with all this mm-hmm. mess mm-hmm. and i knew he only had a short time to to be you know in the body and on the planet so i mm-hmm. went to visit him and i mean and really at that time he was on so many pain meds and so many different drugs, he was sleeping about 23 hours a day. Then he would come out to the living room and sit on the couch or whatnot, and maybe for an hour. And then he mm-hmm. was a little bit, not dementia, but he was a little confused. You know, he mm-hmm. would talk to me about the military, which was 20 years ago, or he talked to me about this thing or, mm-hmm. you know, but I mean, really there was nothing I could do, but be there. Yeah. And I feel just like you, I ask myself all the time, like, should I have done more? Could I have like, gone and like snuggled up with him in the bed and just like held him for a while or something like that but i mean i -hmm. think whatever happened was perfect and 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 honestly we we can do nothing else because i mean it's already passed yeah like beating ourselves up is not not gonna help anybody yeah and you know i think i think a lot of guys that that struggle with um with the uh i think i think a lot of guys um may have a tendency to struggle with can I be enough if I'm there or whatever? And, and unfortunately, I think a lot of us choose to check out. Yeah. And I, th- I think the opposite of, of being present in holding space is checking out and creating space. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, and I think, man, I just I just can't believe I just said that. Yeah. Um, uh, holding space versus creating space and creating spaces when you just bounce. And how many of us have had father experiences where, you know, the person just bounced and then you create a space, you create that space and it's a void, you know, and it's a void that that needs to be filled somewhere. And so many women are left to fill the voids of absentee men. Um, you know, but from a man perspective, you know, when there's a sense of inadequacy, as opposed to just accepting the fact that being there is enough, you know, then in holding space, I think some men choose to take their inadequacy and turn it into, you know, vacating the space. Yeah. And that, well, that, that, that's where it gets unfortunate. I, I could see that, in, you know, there's the physical absence where they just leave. And I mean, and that's kind of, the three masculine reactions are to react, to shut down, or to, if, if they're, if they can be present, then just to be there. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you can still create space or, or leave, even if your body's still there, like you mm -hmm. just, you're mm -hmm. just not here. You just right off right. there. Like I can't deal with yeah. this. Yeah. I think we do that to ourselves because like you said, <laughs> we feel like we need to have answers. We feel like we need to be able to fix things. And when we get into these situations where there's nothing we can do, than just acknowledging our presence as enough. Mm -hmm. And I know that's hard. That's because, I mean, I wasn't taught that. You know, I was always mm -hmm. taught you got to be doing and you need mm -hmm. to have the answers and you got to have a plan and all those things. But, mm -hmm. I mean, when you don't have a plan, just being there, just letting them know you're they're not alone. And I think, and especially with, I mean, what you went through, what the country is going through, we need a lot more of that just being with. Mm -hmm. We don't have each other's answers. And, and, and as a coach, I mean, as somebody who works with couples and singles and people, when it comes to communication and intimacy and connection, it really comes down to not trying to put your script or your expectations on another person or what you think mm -hmm. they should do. It's like, I don't know what you need. I don't know yeah. what they need, but I can be there and be in support while they find their own answers. They find their own things. And yeah, sometimes maybe you ask questions just to help mm -hmm. them. Yeah, I mean, I think we as men a lot of times get really caught up in that. Like, I feel like I need to have your answers. So I got to have some yeah. sort of wisdom for you. But maybe and maybe some maybe sometimes being there is the answer. Yeah. You know, maybe sometimes I mean, because I guess in hindsight, maybe I can just hope that my son saw me just being there. Like I wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to come in and take over. And you know, my mom's been taking care of my grandmother for a decade, right? So how am I? Who am I to come in and? here's what we need to do and we need to do this and that. Now, I thought it was a, a ironic um, dynamic that several times my mom would be like, you know, should we do this or should we, like, I don't know if I should wrap up the wound or because she's going to pull it off or, or, you know, should we do medicine this way or should we do medicine that way or, you know, and and just, you know, I, I, I found like her almost looking to me for, you know, not necessarily looking for me for direction, but almost just to bounce it off of, because normally it's just her, you know, and, and the couple of times I went in and, you know, checked her blood sugar and then gave her insulin because she's also a diabetic, um, which is why she had the legs amputated. But, um, you know, and just, you know, maybe just maybe the best that, that could come out of that was not only providing some kind of relief for my mom and her seeing me for the first time and my in a couple, two and a half years. And it would happen to be her birthday last weekend, her 70th birthday. So on her birthday weekend and family came over and we got to celebrate and I went and bought her a cake and all this other stuff and, and you know, so on and so forth. But point being, you know, maybe, you know, just being there is the answer where well, we don't have to have answers, but just be the answer and being the answer is just showing up. No, I completely agree. I mean, it just makes me think of what, uh, what what's the saying? What what do kids call love? T I M E. Mm. Not about having answers. It's just about being mm -hmm. there and, mm -hmm. and and being present. You know. Mm -hmm. And and I I mean uh, we've talked about this before. Most of us are eight year olds in adult bodies anyway. So I mean I don't think there's we I think we overcomplicate things because we're supposed mm -hmm. to be adults. So now mm -hmm. we have to have answers and plans and things. Mm -hmm. Let, let's simplify it. Let's just yeah. be together and, and be present with each other and just spend some time yeah that's the most yeah. precious gift i mean time is the the one non-renewable resource really yeah. so 
And, and so, I, and so I guess you know we have to, as men, you know, give ourselves grace to just be in the space, and that's in. And even if you don't have the answers or don't have the solution or whatever, let that be enough. I mean, let that be enough that, you know what, if nothing else can be said, at least the story, at least it goes, I was there. Yeah. Well, you I know, think at I least mean, I was there. At least I was in the stands, you know, yeah. I mean, at least you know, you're on the field playing. You know? At least I was or at least I was at the recital. Or at least I was at the game. At least I was, you know. And I'm not saying set the bar so low that, you know, that it's easy to be successful, but don't set the bar so high that you think there's it's unachievable, that, that it takes a lot more than just being there to, to meet to meet the the the, uh, the the need at the moment. I think I think you really like hit the nail on the head there because we're so feel like, especially as men, I got to have a plan. I got to have answers. And so when we don't, then we get down on ourselves and don't think that our presence is enough. But mm -hmm. A calm male presence, that foundational presence, could be mm -hmm. the exact medicine that that situation needs. Yeah, you know. I'm yeah, and you know, and so we're as we're as we're having this discussion. You know, Father's Day is this weekend, and you know, <clears throat> Father's Day can be either good or bad for some people in some yeah. kind of way. And yeah. you know, generally speaking, Mother's Day normally has a good connotation, but Father's Day not so much uh, for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, in one way or another, you know, and, you know, and, and even for some dads, you know, might struggle with that. I'm a father, but I don't know what a father is in terms of seeing it, in terms of being taught anything or wisdom or anything like that. And, and to, you know, just like you, my father's dead. So, you know, I can't even like, you know, ask him for advice or even reconcile anything. But, but point being, as you know, from, from this being the Father's Day weekend, you know, us as, as guys, especially if we're in that, you know, any kind of fatherly role, um, uh, you know, I think just being there is, you know, I don't know that I ever can, I, I can't remember a single like Father's Day with my father, like celebrating Father's Day. Like, I, I don't, I know it's not a new holiday. <laughs> I don't know when they came out with Father's Day, but I don't remember, I don't remember a single memory of celebrating father's day and so maybe just me being with my kids and the plans that we have this weekend you know is is you know that's if nothing else that's more than what i had yeah. so mm -hmm. maybe i'm just advancing the ball down the field a little bit yeah. you know, setting it I'm, up for, I'm, for the next generation. i'm like you i'm thinking about like maybe it's just my aging memory but i i, I struggle with a lot of holidays and things i remember some christmases i remember a couple of thanksgivings mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Father's Day. I, mean, I don't remember. I don't remember uh, Father's Day, man. I, and I, you know, the only thing I think I do remember was the, you know, the the little gifts like the ties or the ashtray or the little things that you did as a kid. I don't even remember that, man. And so, you know, any guys that I know, right? I mean, just think about it. Like, hmm, but maybe yeah. somebody's watching this might be like, hmm. Well, you know, that, so that brings yeah. up that other point we were talking about. Like, I'm gonna stir the pot a little bit. So, mm -hmm. you know, here we go. But when it's Father's Day, and I know a lot of times it, Father's Day can be a very happy when the father's around and it's a family and then, you know, the the wife and kids really want to celebrate him and, and they plan all these different things. But then there's also like, it's Father's Day, like it's his mm -hmm. day. Does he have some say? I know I was talking with another friend about, you know, maybe we should go do something that we want to do. And so he's like, well, I'm going to have brunch with my family. And I invited them. They're welcome to come with us, but they mm -hmm. just declined. So now we get to go as men be with together and kind of celebrate a masculine thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess that's a person to person relationship to relationship thing. But mm -hmm. it's like, okay, are you, are you allowing your Father's Day to be taken over or is this something you want to do? And I think mm -hmm. spending time with family is definitely necessary if you have yeah. that option. But yeah. I don't know. It's just a thought I was throwing out there. Like, well, I mean, it's yeah. your day. What do you want to do with yeah. it? <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, to that point, I I actually, I mean, my kids crack me up when they all get together, man. They just, it is, it's so chaotic, but it's so funny to hear them go back and forth and all that kind of stuff. It's entertaining to me. Yeah. I mean, now they're at the point age-wise, you know, 23, 21, 17, and 15, um, where, you know, they do have opinions and experiences and all that kind of stuff. And they do go back and forward. And, and so it's kind of comical. Now we can, we can hang out and be cool and we can have fun. I'm just glad mine 
this year actually plan some stuff. Um, <laughs> and so where I don't have to, you know, make it. And part of their plan is for me to cook some stuff on a grill, which is cool because I like cooking on a grill. Yeah. So, um, so I'm, I'm actually looking forward to, to this particular Father's Day. But, but yeah, to your point of, you know, to your point of if it's about him or not, I don't know. I guess that's man to man, kind of like person to person. But, uh, but, you know, for us to, you know, for us to even recognize that as as men, and if you are a father, you know, to to be in that space, to hold that space of just being a father, even if you're inadequate, man, just be there and just do the best you can, if nothing else. You know, I, I don't know if it was sometime in the last week or something like that. You know, my son, he said some kind of offhand comment about, you know, me being a good dad or something like that. and. And I was like, well, you know, I'm doing the best I can, but I guarantee you're going to be better than me. Um, mm-hmm. And like I said, if nothing else, he can stand on my shoulders. Um, and, well, and that kind of, I don't know, maybe this, 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 this brought up another thought that I remember that old commercial or whatever it was where they had like, you know, the, the, the women look in a mirror and then describe themselves and then their kids looked, in their, it looked at, at their pictures of their moms and described them and the, the discrepancy. Uh, yeah. what the parents thought of themselves versus what the kids did so i think we <clears throat> especially as men put so much pressure on it and i think that's yeah. why we wanted to talk about holding space with grace that grace is allowing what what is to be like, like yeah. allow yourself not to have all the answers allow yourself just to be present and spend time allow yourself because i mean that's not just for fathers i mean that's yeah. in every situation yeah when we make ourselves feel inadequate as men because we don't have all the answers we don't have some sort of plan or some sort of fix Mm -hmm. but if we allow that to take us away if we allow that to take our attention our presence or even our physical physical beingness away if we Mm -hmm. we, you know isolate and leave the situation that's Mm -hmm. not helping yeah that's that's not that's not being there with grace allow yourself some grace now, one thing one thing I do disagree with that I that I kind of see regularly on Father's Day is um, is celebrating moms on Father's Day, uh, which you know, like basically under the premise that that there's a single mom and she did both, you know, kind of mom and dad, and and you know, I've had this conversation with my mom, you know, over the course of life, and she's like, nah, I, you know, I could never be a father, kind of thing, and so. Um, and so I've seen that tendency, even of people to give moms a card for Father's Day and that kind of stuff. And, and you know, I, I, I kind of get it in terms of the idea of, you know, if, if a man vacated that space, you know, and created space and then the mom held up even more of the weight. Right. You know, then I get the idea that maybe she filled in that space, which I don't think she filled in the masculine space so much right. as much as she just held up twice the weight that she was supposed to hold up. So I don't I don't know that we should, you know, I don't know that it's appropriate to be celebrating, you know, to 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 make mom, you know, or not to make mom, but to put mom in the position of of, of the father relegating her to a father position. That That's, brings up another point that while you're talking, I'm like, well, this might this might actually be a great opportunity for those single mother households and for those who may not have a father around, but I'm assuming at some level, at some point, maybe there's an uncle, there's a brother, there's a grandfather, there's friends, there's, you know, mm-hmm. pastors or something. There's some masculine energy, there's some sort of fatherly like energy around. I'm assuming, I mean, I could be completely wrong, but this might be an excellent <laughs> opportunity to really shine love and appreciation on those who are there to support you, uh, yeah. whether you're a single mother or a single dad or you know, whatever the situation may be. But yeah. Whatever that masculine fatherly influence is, I mean, this yeah. could be a great time. I mean, I could just imagine. I mean, it, honestly, I don't even know if I could imagine, but I know I would get really emotional with somebody that I was a mentor to, or mm-hmm. just giving some time and energy to, who looked to me as a, a healthy masculine influence mm-hmm. to, to celebrate me on something like a Father's Day. Or, I mean, I just just that thought makes me emotional. Yeah. So I could just imagine how that could be such a beneficial ripple. So. And, you know, I mean, as we even as we line up on the runway here, I'm almost thinking, man, you know, you know, I wonder if there are single moms out there that that um, that don't have any kind of male influence in their sons, particularly their sons lives and maybe have a heart to say, hey, I need some help with my son. I would like some 
not necessarily even that the son is you know in trouble or at risk or anything like that but i would like some male you know some male uh space to be held up in his life kind of thing and maybe there's some moms that, that would want to reach out you know yeah. reach out to somebody and maybe there's a mom that wants to reach out to us yeah. you know and say hey i don't know what i never thought about i don't know what that looks like i've had some some i've had some thoughts on some things to do for for young men and that kind of stuff but um but you know maybe there's some moms that that want to reach out to say hey how do i get my son in some male spaces yeah. um which is completely appropriate and yeah. so i've had so, that conversation recently with some folks on another podcast we did that uh you know and my son's 21 and he's been yeah. around me his whole life and he doesn't really have any strong male influences and he seems yeah. too much like a nice guy well yeah so I mean, because it does, it takes a man to make a man, yeah. right? I mean, it takes. I mean, it, I mean, for iron to sharpen iron. I mean, it it takes a man to make a man. And so I don't believe that you know femininity or, or that you know a, a feminine heart or feminine space or whatever you want to call it, um, you know, is adequately equipped to create um, well-rounded. And, and, and holistic masculinity. I think sometimes you got to get around man spaces and we as grown men got to get around man spaces. Yeah. Um, most of us were raised by women. So, you know, we got to do that. So uh, I don't know, man. Hey, if there's if there's somebody, JBK, that's out there that might say, hey, man, you know, <laughs> maybe maybe the man in my life or maybe there is a guy or maybe there's somebody that needs, you know, uh, a, a connection catalyst, man, somebody that catalyzed their connectivity, um, you know, and they want to reach out to this guy, JBK. How do they get a hold of Jason B. Kendrick? I'm easy. Right here, jasonbkendrick.com. Check Nerd. out the website. I mean, in a nutshell of what I do, if you ever wish that your partner or uh, even if you had an instruction manual or some sort of direction guide, I help you to find those things for you and for your partner so that you can better connect and, be, and create better intimacy. And when I'm not doing those things, I'm trying to hang out with my main mamma jamma over here, Mr. Kirk and Samuels. And if you have any issues that he feels like, if you feel drawn to him, if you feel like there's something he can add, because I guarantee you he has a toolbox a mile wide and a mile deep. He's got all kinds of things to offer. But if people want to get a hold of you, Kirk, I mean, how are mm -hmm. they going to find you? um right there uh that would be kirkmsamuels.com and you know and you know we practice what we preach i mean you and i get together i mean yeah. you and i you know we get together play golf we get together and do nothing i mean you know man you you drive over here just to give me a popeye's chicken sandwich man i mean you know well, I, mean, I can I mean, have one myself so it's not yeah like, i mean totally you something. you know you've you've crashed at my crib before man yeah. you know i you know i've been in there to help you move around some furniture yeah, and stuff yeah, so thank you we uh you know point being my my point is we live this stuff out and so it is it is absolutely important man and and this is our heart and we we don't do this we do it it is fun but we do this because we have a heart to make the world a better place and and uh we call this a mad men and mess masculinity not because we're crazy but because we're passionate about yeah. masculinity um and, and so we want to do these things and that's what we're trying to heal both kirk and i in our own way are, are wanting to heal the father-son wounds of this country we want to heal masculinity and we want to heal yeah. the world through that so yeah how no can doubt. we help you how can you help us because i guarantee you whatever questions you have whatever needs you have we're going to get something out of it just by yep. even talking to you about it or holding space for you so you better believe it better believe out. it so, JBK, I love you, man. I love you. I don't know how to sure. end this because, I mean, we've been holding space and talking about holding space. But uh, for you guys out there, for you ladies out there, just be present. You don't have to have all the answers. Love each other and uh, we'll make it make it through that way. Yeah. All right. Take all care, right. my man. Love you, baby. Love you all. We'll see you next time. See you.